I'm in Campbellford, Ontario, home to beautiful scenery, delicious donuts, chocolate and cheese, and of course, craft beer. Small-scale craft breweries are popping up all over Canada to help satisfy our thirst for locally brewed beer. I'm Angela Bell, and I'm drinking my way across Canada, one craft brewery at a time. I'm looking for real folks that are making real beer. This is Crafted in Canada. I've already tasted some great locally brewed beer this season, but I had my biggest tasting surprise today. Who knew that you could make a great beer that tastes just like chocolate milk? This is John Graham, and he's been brewing great beer right here in Campbellford for 18 years. Brewing for me is the right balance between art and science, and it satisfies all my creative needs as well as uh, you know, just be, be my own employer and all that, so that, that works. Um, I was about to say be my own boss, but I don't think I am. I, I answer to a lot more people than if I actually had an employer. John found this home for Church Key Brewing in a Methodist church from the 1800s, right in the heart of Ontario in Northumberland County. It's geographically halfway between Toronto and Ottawa, which are the, the, the two largest uh, beer drinking centres. So uh, although it seems like we're, uh, we're in the middle of nowhere, we're actually in the centre of everything. From the very beginning, I was looking for either, uh, you know a building with character, either uh, an old church, an old schoolhouse. You know, church, church key brewing could have been old school brewing. That was sort of the, the two working plans when I was looking for a location. Um, it's the the character, the character, of the building, the tall ceilings, and this was a very new venture. Um, you know, 18 years ago when I when I set out to do it, um, it craft brewing or micro brewing, as we we called it back then. Uh, wasn't really well known and, and because it was so new I, I, I thought there was a marketing advantage to borrow a hundred years worth of history. So, it, so it's in this 1878 Methodist church and that's a, that's a neat story even before the first drop of beer is done. What I love most about brewing is just the, uh, the, the, the balance between the art and the science of it. It's, uh, I get to be as creative as I want as long as I follow the, the scientific rules and I know what's, what what's going to happen. And then sometimes there's that, that roll of the dice to you. We started today's tasting with Church Key's flagship beer, Northumberland Ale. We've been making it for 17 years. Um, the reason I chose this style, it's a stock ale style. Um, it's kind of unique to Eastern Ontario and upstate New York when the, the German settlers and the, the British settlers came to this area uh, 100 years ago, 200 years ago, the brewers of the day were looking for a, a compromise style, something that would appeal to, uh, to, to the, the most people. So this is, the, this is the, the stock ale. It's got a lot of the same qualities as a lager, although it's brewed with an ale yeast. Next up was the West Coast Pale Ale. This fruity number gets its grapefruit rind character from a helping of Chinook hops. It was delicious and refreshing. My biggest surprise of the day was their Holy Cow Milk Stout. It has roasted barley like other stouts, but throw in some chocolate nibs and some lactose and holy cow, you have a delicious stout recipe. Yeah, that's really yeah. good. Like, I assume you already like coffee, you already like chocolate, so those that, yeah, that yeah. roasted character is already something you enjoy, so yeah. it makes sense that you'd enjoy it in a beer as well. When John opened Church Key Brewing in 2000, the microbrewery business was quite different than it is today. At the time, two or three breweries controlled all of the, all of the, the beer in the entire country. And, uh, and stylistically, we were, we were getting a, a tiny sliver of what, what beer could be. There was, uh, you know, it was all light, light lagers of, of sorts and, and even some very misnamed things, you know, beers that said they were IPAs or said they were Pilsners that were just very light lagers. The, the large brewers were thriving on the misinformation and instead just doing this lifestyle marketing. I'd say overall, it's a, it's a healthy industry. It's a growing industry. I uh, think consumers are, uh, are are pretty savvy these days and uh, and, and looking for, for quality beer and they want to know who brewed it. John has helped dozens of other craft brewers get started in Ontario over the past decade. One of the nicest things about the industry nowadays is, is these um, either truly youthful or youthful minded folks coming, coming up and they just say, you know, this is, love what you're doing, I want, I want to do it as well. I want to, uh, um, I want to be in the craft, in, 
craft beer industry. It's that uh, you know shed the shed the cubicle and the and the suit and tie, and I'm just happy to uh, pass what I know along and, and point them in the right direction so they can continue to get to to know what they need to do. To to say no and sequester my knowledge, it, it's both. It's not me, and and it's not industry. This is uh, um, I don't know whether it, it goes back. 500 or a thousand years where where brewing really is taught at guilds you know where where it's a it's a fraternity of of, um, of folks together and 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 teaching each other the knowledge they know to continue the this this art the new fraternity of craft brewers in Canada owes a debt of gratitude to pioneers of the industry like John Graham but he doesn't want to hear that he just wants to keep making great beer